All right, here's a basic example of how to write a parametric program for a part family. I have drawn uh, four parts that, as you can see, would be considered a part family. We got part number 1111, 2222, 3333, and 4444. We start out with a part that's two inches long, one inch wide. Then the next size will be four inches long, two inches wide, six inches long, three inches wide, and the last one eight inches long and four inches wide. And then each part has a hole right in the center of the part, and we take the length divided by two, and then we take the width and divided by two, and that gives us the location of the hole for each part. All right, so let's talk about the first step in creating a parametric program. All right, so the first step we're going to take is we're going to look at the dimensions that are going to be changing from part to part. So the length is going to change on every part, so we're going to assign it a variable number 100. Then the width is going to change from part to part, so we're going to assign it variable number 101. Then the location of the hole in one direction is going to change. We're going to assign it number 102. And then the second distance of that whole location is also going to change. So we're going to assign it variable number 103. So these variable numbers will be identical for those features on every part. So let's take a look at that. All right, so for part number 2222, again, we assigned a variable number 100 to the length, 101 to the width, 102 to the first direction, of the whole location and then 103 for the second distance of the whole location. All right, and here's part number 3333. 33. You can see the six inches, we got 100, the width 101, first direction of the whole 102, and second direction of the whole distance 103. One more left, part number 4444. 44. Again, the 80 inch has number 100, the width 101. First location 102 and second location 103. All right, so let's talk about how we use these variables. All right, at the top of the program, we're going to start with the program number one, and we're going to call it a parametric program. Then we're going to load variable number 500 with our part number. So here we're going to put either 1111, 2222, 33, 33, or 44, 44. So this is the only number we will need to change and have the program run either one of those four parts. All right. So now that we have loaded number 500 with our part number, the next statement will be looking for an N number with that part number. So go to number 500. The number 500 in this case will be loaded with 1111. It's going to be looking for N 11, 11. So if this was 2222, and it would say go to number 500, it would be looking for N2222. So then it would be looking for this next number. It will actually skip over this code here and stop at N2222, and then read in these variables, and then jump again to number 100, and it will look for the first operation which will start with sequence number 100 for tool number one. All right, so then right below the N1111, we list the variables that we just assigned to the different dimensions of the part. So number 100 in this case is the two inch length. The number 101 is the one inch width. The number 102 is the first distance of the whole location. And then the number 103 is the second distance of the whole location. All right, now notice next to the number 102 where it says equals number 100 divided by 2, instead of hard coding it right here, which would be 1 inch, we're taking number 100, which has already been loaded, so it takes 2 divided by 2, so that this will then end up being 1 inch. And then the same for number 103, it says equals number 101 divided by 2. So instead of you doing the calculation and doing the math for the program, let the program do the math for you. All right, so you do this for all four part numbers. You can see number 100 and number 101 will determine the length of each part. 
so once those variables are loaded it jumps to n100 with this go to 100 statement that's where these variables are going to be used to mill and drill the shape of the part so let's take a closer look at that portion of the program all right so once we get to n100 we're actually going to be doing the machining so we're going to mill the outside of the profile first and we're going to start with our safety line we're going to wrap it home in z then we're going to make a tool change turn the spindle on and we're going to wrap it to g90 g0 g54 x minus 0.350 y 0.350 so that is our approach point that is going to be the same on all four parts because the origin is in the upper left hand corner so using a half inch end mill we are at a safe distance away from that corner all right so g43 h1 z1 inch we're going to call the offset of the tool and wrap it to one inch above the part then we feed g1 to z minus one inch f20 and the first move we're going to make is g1 y.250 so that's 250 thousandths away from our first edge using a half inch tool so that is 250 thousandths remember we are programming to the center of the tool then the next move we're going to be using our first variable g1 x number 100 number 100 in this case was loaded with two inches and then we're going to say plus 0.250 because we need to move our tool beyond that edge by 250 or half the diameter of the tool then we're going to go to g1 y minus number 101 the number 101 was loaded with one inch and we're going to go an additional 250 thousandths beyond that edge so this is how it's going to read y minus number 101 minus 0.250 so that's what the two variables are going to be used they're going to control the length and the width of the part then the rest is hard coded because g1 x minus 0.250 will be the same on all parts because the left side of the rectangle is going to be the same dimension on all four part numbers then the g1 y.35 is a hundred thousands beyond the edge of the part when it goes back to the initial start point in y and then we move away in x to x minus 0.350 and then we finish out that operation with a rapid move to z1 inch turn off the spindle turn off the coolant wrap it to z home position and then an m1 optional stop right after that we'll go right into n200 where we're going to be drilling the hole in the middle of the part again we have our safety line we home out in z we make our tool change turn on the spindle and we're going to wrap it to g90 g0 g54 x number 102 and y minus number 103 and that puts us on location where the hole is going to be drilled right in the middle of the part g43 h2 z1 inch we call up the tool offset wrap it 200 thousandths above the part and we g81 z minus one inch r1 f2 that means we're going to be drilling one inch deep and the r.1 is our clearance or retract plane then we end the can cycle with a g80 wrap it back up to z1 inch turn off the spindle turn off the coolant home out in z and we end the program with an m30 now let's take a look at the simulator and we're going to be changing the part number at the top of the program and the simulation will show you how it updates the new geometry based on the different variables loaded for that part number all right so here we're looking at the program in the simulator and variable number 500 at the top of the program is loaded with part number 1111 and you can see this is the shape of the part two inches by one inch and then a hole right in the middle so to change from one part to the next all we do is change it to 2222 and you can see the software updates to the new shape of the part based on the new variables that were loaded right here in the N2222 section all right so the next part number is 3333 33. and again now it looks at the variables loaded right here under N3333 
And so we have one more to go in this part family, 44, 44. And you can see that's the largest of the four. All right, so you can see this is a very powerful way of writing a program. Now, of course, this was a very simple example, but I'm going to leave a copy of this program in the description down below. So take a look at it, see how it's structured. Then go ahead and add some features to this part, add some variables, and see if you can make it all work. All right, there's more of these videos to come in the near future. So thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.